What a monster have we unleashed. Honestly, social media. The news that I read on my mobile or on my computer are truly mind-boggling. Now, half of them is fake news at the very least, but still, to read some of what is being reported as true, as stories happening across the world, and all that by using this app and that app and this GIF and that GIF, and now, at this stage, friends who know me will be smiling quite broadly because if I were to change the lyrics of one of Frank Sinatra's songs, Harry and technology do not marry well together. However, today what I have done is prepare a list. Yes, a small list. I usually extemporize, I improvise my YouTube channel Rants and uh, chats are pretty much unscripted, but in the words of another hero of mine, Hercule Poirot, uh, the little cells are getting a little bit tired, and I need to remember the latest social media news that I read, which made my eyebrows shoot north quite dramatically. And besides, uh, Charles Aznavour, an icon of mine, used to say in the last years before he died, when he used to have those recitals, listen, he used to say, everybody who comes and sings at concerts pretends that they are, they've got it all in their head, the songs. Well, I don't. I don't remember half the songs that I've written, so I've got to read them as I'm singing them. Now, I'm not there yet, but... Who knows, if I survive this coronavirus, I might even get there. So, without further ado, welcome to Arm Wrestling with uh, COVID-19, and this is number seven today. The first uh, story that I want to share with you is one that amused me no end, when there was a, a picture of a lion roaming in Moscow, and the uh, caption was that President Vladimir Putin had basically released anything between 50 and 80 lions in order to make sure that the Moscovites stay in their houses and they abide by the self-isolation guidance. I think it's even some sort of a curfew uh, in Moscow. Now, 50 or 80 lions for some 20 million uh, Russians, that's not going to be very effective, but nevertheless, uh, that was the story and people were commenting on it furiously. And then lo and behold, somebody said, this story was in South Africa, not in Russia, and it was quite a few years ago. So there we go, that one goes straight into my trash bin. And then I also uh, learned that different countries are applying different measures in order to force their citizens to abide by the guidance, by the curfew, by staying in their houses. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, apparently, you end up paying hefty fines. Now, don't laugh at this, because we think of Saudi Arabia as being a kingdom of multi, multi, multi rich people only. Well, that's not true, actually. There are loads of poor people. There are even unemployed people. Don't think that just because the royal family buys yachts that I wouldn't even know how many zeros go uh, after the figure, that doesn't mean that most Saudis have that ability as well. But apparently, fines are applicable in Saudi Arabia, but in Morocco, where pretty much everybody doesn't have uh, money except a sort of layer right at the top, they're going around slapping people. The police goes and slaps people who do not uh, stay in their houses. Well, that's another way of enforcing the law, I suppose. If we go back to Roman law, which I did many, many years ago uh, when I was studying for my law degree, uh, there used to be so many Latin maxims, and one of them was about slapping people in order to enforce the law. So, hey, you see, what goes round comes round. And then, what else? Let me see now. The... Other thing that I thought was quite hilarious was there were a few of those uh, media news say, showing rather drones 
delivering water and loo rolls to people. You get that drone, average size, I suppose, with a little bag hanging from it. Must be quite sturdy to be able to carry a bag which contains one loo roll, which is pretty much manageable, and a medium-sized bottle of water as well. Now, how long is that going to last you, that uh, half bottle of water? But then again, imagine how much you're being charged for that service. Wow! Another interesting thing. And then, what else? I also um, learned, I suppose that's the way to do it, is that there are so many scams going on on social media, so please be careful. People are trying to scam others, they're telling them, they're they're writing to them or whatever, telling them that uh, they have been fined for going out of their houses and they have to pay this kind of money and that kind of money. Or, alternatively, what they're doing is they're telling them, you are now uh, eligible for tax refunds, so could you please give us details of your bank account so we uh, credit your account with that amount of money. Now, this is nothing new. It's been happening for so long and people have been, banks even have been warning us, don't do it, don't uh, answer, don't respond, don't divulge. Uh, secrets. But it's quite funny, actually, in the middle of a crisis, and quite a severe crisis, when you think that at least one third of the world, if not more than that, uh, yeah, more than that, are at the moment either in self-isolation or under curfew, that they're basically uh, de being subjected to such scams, such criminal behavior. Well, it's, uh, I suppose, it's eye-opening. So there you have it, and uh, I'm not going to say more uh, today, except perhaps to add two little uh, stories that are true, uh, and they are also, one is good and one is not so good. Apparently in France, nurses who work so hard in uh, uh, the hospitals are being subjected to, uh, I don't know, to disrespect people People are shouting at them, etc., when they go to their houses, telling them, don't go out to walk the dog in this neighborhood, go somewhere else. You're coming from a hospital, you're a nurse, so you might be carrying or you might this bug or you might be infected with the new coronavirus. Please go somewhere else. And I'm thinking to myself, these are the people who are risking so much in order to help us. And yet some people have the cheek, no, no, more than the cheek, the insolence, more than the insolence, the attitude, this pathetic attitude, or instead of making them feel wanted and telling them, if you want to go and have a, a, a sleep, I'll take your dog for a walk instead around the block, they're basically telling them, what are you doing here, etc., etc. This is awful. And on the other hand, I also want to leave you with one set of figures for you to mull over. In a previous uh, channel uh, chat, I told you that the most important thing is not, in my opinion, self-isolation. The most important thing, and that's what many, many medics are saying, is testing, 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 testing. Because it's only when you test that you can find out who's carrying the bug, and then you can treat those people with the bugs, and then you can improve the general health of the population. And for your information, in uh, Germany, there are 50,000 tests being done. In this country, according to one of the uh, reports this morning on the Today program, only 7,000. No wonder that in uh, Germany, there are so many cases and yet so many fewer. Is that English? So fewer mortalities. Friends, if you're watching this and if you want to share it, subscribe to my YouTube just to give me a zing, a little boost. That's all I'm asking for uh, because this basically is just me communicating with you randomly on any uh, choice of topic on any day of the week. So stay safe, keep well, continue washing your hands, try to stay in except blah 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 blah, we know it by heart by now, and all the best to you, social media and all. Bye.